The first boss you meet in a video game is supposed to test the abilities you've learned in the early stages, giving you a hint of challenge before ushering you on to bigger and better things. And yet for some ambitious first bosses, the bottom of the ladder just isn't senior enough. Whether they're rock hard and a nightmare to fight, or just way too terrifying for the start of a game, these ruthless go-getters should really be higher up in the big boss hierarchy, if not running things altogether. Here then are the first bosses in games who really deserve a promotion in their next annual review. Along the way, beware spoilers for the following. Now for some people watching, I'll say the name Bane, and the first desire you'll have is to talk like this! Hello! But comic book Bane is one of Batman's most iconic and fearsome brute force villains, the one who broke the bat. So what Arkham Asylum thinks it's doing serving him up as a first boss is beyond us. And yet, absurdly, in Asylum, the venom-powered wrestling mask-wearing Bane is the first major enemy you'll come up against. Pumped full of Titan by the Joker, Batman starts the fight very much on the back foot, on account of being thrown bodily through a brick wall. Even though, as I understand it, Batman works out now and then, Bane's sheer size turns this into a real David and Goliath battle. Except one where Goliath shatters David's spine if he loses. The bat is broken! <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> Just like David, though, Batman has projectile technology to fall back on. And the trick to giving Bane the heave ho is to blind him with a batarang, then leap atop his titan infused shoulders to cut off his fuel supply. Good luck with that though when there's a steady stream of Joker's goons piling into the fray, keeping you pinned down and distracted while Bane polishes his spine snapping knee. Even the Joker agreed Bane was a scary boss. I mean, imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, right? Great, looks yeah, yeah, really, suits really suits you. Yeah, guys. Really yeah. yeah. Don't smash Look, it off very Just nice. Mm-hmm. Being a rock-hard boss is about more than having a massive health bar. Sometimes the toughest attacks to counter are the ones that take place inside our heads, man. You'd think Link would be impervious to psychological assault. He's the hero of legend, after all, cutting a swathe through the ne'er-do-wells of Hyrule. And first bosses in the series usually have the good grace to recognise this immutable fact, and roll over after a few smacks in their giant obvious eye. <laughs> Not so with Girahim, the first boss you face in Skyward Sword. Combat with this unsettling swordsman is no cakewalk, thanks to his ability to grab your sword and yank it away. Hey, I was using that! Where he really outshines the first boss mob though, is with his terrifying pre-battle smack talk, whispering threats to Link like a personal space invading Dracula, in a manner so deeply creepy that the only safe way to do this boss fight is while wearing a comfort blanket. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Girahim returns later in the game for two more punch-ups, including the penultimate battle. <laughs> meaning the only upward career space for him would be to replace Final Boss Demise, the ancient ancestor of Ganon himself. But after this performance, we reckon he's booked his place in the top spot. <laughs> and we've booked another therapy session. Yes, Doctor? Yes, the Girahim dream again. Yeah, he was my dentist this time. Quite beautiful, wouldn't you say? Paid for with the lives of many. When you have the strength to take life for yourself, that is true wealth. No More Heroes tells the story of the improbably named Travis Touchdown, a man who wins a lightsaber in an internet auction, then stumbles into a job as an international assassin. I let my guard down. 
sloppy. I gotta stay on my toes. Some guys get all the luck. Four years at Assassin University and I end up having to work here to make ends meet. After killing the 11th best assassin in the world, Travis learns that he now holds that position. And if he wants to get any better, he'll need to bump off the 10 assassins above him in the list. Man, this is what I live for. Fighting your own kind. Nothing's more gratifying. So it's off to the house of the 10th best assassin in the world to make sure the dead part of Dead Man's Shoes applies in this situation. At first, it seems like this is going to be no big deal. The assassin in question, known as Death Metal, looks like Ganondorf's burnout older brother, and has clearly been spending most of his time lying around drinking. I mean, even his sword doesn't look that big. Ultimate sacrifice is sublime. Oh. Yeah, it turns out you don't get to be the 10th best assassin in the world without actually being pretty good at killing people. Something Death Metal is happy to prove to you as he goes nutso on your face with that giant sword, all the while shrugging off your beam katana like it's a tanning lamp. And that's before he starts making clones of himself. Eventually, after killing his clones and wailing on him a million times with your laser sword, you do eventually beat Death Metal, but bloody hell, as first bosses go, that was quite the ordeal. At least he takes it well. Extraordinary. The moment I've been waiting for. The name Holy Sword is now yours. Still, if I were the United Assassins Association, I'd feel a bit weird about the 10th ranked assassin in the world being a guy who charges his beam katana like this. <laughs> This is Pikachu. Pretty cute, right? As in you wouldn't want to smash its face in with a rock. But not everyone is so sympathetic, as young trainers setting out on their Pokemon Yellow adventure will quickly learn. This electrified special edition of the Pokemon Red and Blue games lets you sally forth with pop culture's least bathroom safe hero waddling adorably behind you. Trouble was, Pikachu's presence was about the only thing that Pokemon Yellow changed, so the first boss you'd bump into down the tracks was Brock, appropriately named champion of rock Pokemon, and boasting two rock-slash-ground-type pocket monsters. And as we know, ground nullifies electricity, which is why it's safe for me to place my hand in this toaster so long as I'm holding this pot full of earth. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Pikachu might be the electric one, but it's Brock who delivers the short, sharp shock to first-time trainers, offering one of the toughest fights in the whole game straight out the gate, and your first clue that simply having the cutest Pokemon isn't enough to take over the world. <laughs> if it was, Pikachu would be king, and he would enforce his cruel reign with an iron fist. Yes, you would. Yes, you would. You don't look so good, boy. In Deus Ex Human Revolution, you start off playing Adam Jensen as just a regular human without any glossy high-tech augmentations. That's right, the beard is all natural. I'm glad you understand. Good night, idiot. However, minutes into the game, Sarif Industries is attacked by some obviously augmented people, giving you your first look at Hard as Nails first boss Barrett, who guns down two cornered scientists behind this glass wall. Damn it! Glass walls with NPCs just the other side of them. My biggest nemesis. Still, after Barrett's boss messes you up, you take newly augmented Jensen to Highland Park, a place that sounds much nicer than it actually is. Get that shit out my face! Before I shove it up your ass. It's here that justice will surely be yours as you prepare to flex some of your own hard-won augmentations and avenge those poor scientists. I mean, unless Barrett punches you straight to the floor before the fight even starts. Hey, dude! Never heard of a fair fight! Apparently not. Barrett's next move is to turn his augmented left arm into a minigun, relentlessly following Jensen around the room with no regard for the fact that the game's only just begun, sending Deus Ex players both to hell and the nearest gaming forum to desperately ask for advice. Please let us all take a moment to remember those players who had only activated their stealth orgs by this point. All in all, it's a hell of a boss battle to throw at players so fresh to the game. And even when you finally defeat Barrett, or the Bull as he prefers to be known, he doesn't go down fairly. Instead, he pulls out a grenade in the hope of killing you both, the Charmer. Ow! 
Like, dude, firstly, you're the first boss. You're definitely not paid enough to explode yourself. And secondly, I'll ask again, have you never heard of a fair fight? Triceratops was a ceratopsid dinosaur that some scientists believe had an upright posture, which could have given it a run speed of maybe 30 miles an hour, i.e. not enough to beat a chimp in a go-kart. And yet, Tricky the Triceratops provides more than enough challenge as the first boss in Diddy Kong Racing. <laughs> Complicating this sprint up a twisting mountain is how easy it is to fall off the edges and tumbling boulders that threaten to smash your little monkey face in. But what really makes Tricky a real go-getter of first bosses is his willingness to play outside the rules. Note how this unscrupulous reptile clearly, clearly cheats by sprinting off before the starting gun. Get ready. Go. Yeah, very nice, Tricky. Let's say you cheat your way out of a planet-wide extinction event. The future belongs to the apes, my friend. about first bosses and spiders. Wait, spiders? No, 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 no. Is no. more of a scorpion? No, no, sorry, no. Ella, just get this done and then no. we'll, I, it'll be fine. No, Luke, you know that I don't like spiders. I, know, I, I can't know, look at, no, I'm calling my agent. And this is over, done. What is it about first bosses and spiders? Slash scorpions. 2001's Devil May Cry is another title that can't help but have you square off against a gigantic arachnid before you've even tied your shoes. The first stages of the game involve hero Dante poking around in this big gloomy castle and picking off some spooky marionettes. And then this happens. Now that's how you enter a room. Through the ceiling. What makes Phantom the Fire Spider an utterly unreasonable first boss fight is the sheer variety of moves he unleashes, from fireballs to pillars of lava that rise up out of the ground. And he can jump or crush you with his fiery scorpion tail. Moreover, the majority of his body is volcanic rock, so he has very few weak points, which all makes for an opening boss who deserves to be encountered much further into the game. Or ideally, never. Oh great, now I've got arachnophobia. Right, now that spider is out of the picture. I can come back. Scorpion. Scorpions are still arachnids, doesn't help. And uh, if you can think of any other first level bosses that made you come. Oh my gosh, I've only just started playing this game. Why is it so difficult? Then do let us know in the comments down below. Also, you should check out one of these videos from us and our sister channel outside Xbox. Uh, we do lots of cool list videos. They're not hard or horrible or tough to get through. They're great. And you should also click this magical subscribe orb and subscribe to us to get loads more videos like this in future. And we will see you next time.